uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I love a bit of dramatic actors. AI is not a new field. It's a 50-year-old field in computer science. Natural language processing, computer vision, all these areas have been around for a long time already. And many companies, organizations, and governments are using AI for good at this moment. And I really want to talk about the things that we can already do with the tools that we have now today. We can use a single model of pen and still replicate portrait by having different shades of grey in the image by placing these small strokes. The robot decides to do as the, as the placement of the strokes. Do you want me to take it later or I can come by? Yeah, of That's course sir. we will. We need to find my glass slippers. Do you want to put on your lights? I had the chance to have a chat with Prince William, not the English one. I meant Prince William Rudolph Bakovich from Czech Republic. He and his team were pretty cool. Here we also need forces, and this video is explaining what's the underlying problem behind that, what's the underlying challenge. Here what we need is to have the robot being compliant in some directions. It's an exciting time, uh, it's not too late. We insert ourselves in these conversations, can play a big role in the future that we end up living in. And large language models and GPT aren't making that any easier. all of these calls for governance and regulations, uh, what do you see in, in terms of how it would look in practice as we look forward to uh, the future AI kind of governance models? If you could share with us your thoughts, that would be great. Yeah, and I'm, I've been asked a lot about um, that letter as well, and I actually feel like it's our responsibility to be having these conversations. Like I said, I, I joined this organization because I felt it was a moral calling. And I really wanted to make sure that not only are we um, looking at the opportunity, but we're, we're having conversations about the risks. And uh, by putting this more in the forefront, it's, um, it's better to do much sooner than, than wait until we really need to. Now what this artist did is he basically recorded 10 days, yes, 10 days of video from open camera feeds from public squares around the world. There's thousands of these cameras. And then he went to Instagram and scraped all the publicly available profiles that are geotagged for the same location as the Town Square camera. And using AI, he made a match. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, in 2017, when we created AI for Good, only a few people had access to this kind of technology. But now, with a little bit of creativity and patience and determination, you could literally do this in your bedroom. So I think it's safe to say that AI has entered the mainstream. Now, is this good? Is this bad? Is this a gray zone? Well, it depends, right? In this case, it's a rather creative art project. I, I kind of like it. I wish I thought of it myself. Um, but it's not hard to imagine how this kind of technology could be used and abused in the wrong hands. And that's one of the many reasons why we created AI for Good. So AI for Good was created on the premise that we now have less than 10 years to achieve the sustainable development goals. And we saw today that AI has great promise to achieve and advance many of those goals and targets, from climate change to education for all, affordable health care, gender equity, autonomous driving, robotics, smart cities. The use cases are undoubtedly there. So we started about six years ago with a group uh, called uh, Machine Learning in uh, 5G Networks, and we developed, an, we meaning the, uh, the IT membership or whoever cared to uh, contribute to the uh, to work, created an architecture framework which basically uh, set the language for how uh, people in the communications field talk about machine learning. And one really exciting topic that I want to pick out here is the work that we started five years ago with the World Health Organization. You know, we all sort of reasonably maybe trust uh, doctors and, uh, and medication. And uh, the reason why we trust, uh, have trust in this is because we trust the processes and we trust the institutions. But what about if an AI for good solution says that I would have skin cancer? What, what would make it 
so that I can trust the solution. I see the smartest people in the world on AI in this room. I see the people who can create the future by optimizing software, creating applications that the humanity is going to need. But what this is all about, if tomorrow those data centers consume 10, 20, or 30% of the world energy, for what? When we can do better. Liquid to liquid, we can change, we can reuse the heat. Uh, we are all experiencing frequent drought, longer drought, severe drought, water scarcity, and this all, of course, affects food security, water security, stability in the world. However, we have a hope that technology, the technology, communication technology, but also artificial intelligence can bring solution to climate change, to crowdsourcing. So in 2018, we decided to build a startup, which is called Idoven. And we have created the first cardiology as a service platform powered by artificial intelligence. Since then, our algorithms, uh, the name of our AI is called Willem, to honor the Nobel Prize of, uh, that invented the electrocardiogram, which is Willem Eindhoven. So Willem has learned, thanks to our engineers, thanks to cardiologists that are supporting us, from more than 70 million heartbeats. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> we ended up building a system where you could click on a locale, a geography, a region, and also determine what balance of economic impact versus containment you were looking for. And this system would actually produce a set of policies and actions to take, a schedule over the next three months to take in, in reasonable detail. And it would also give you a prediction, in this case the orange line, of uh, what you could achieve if you set these policies in place. My name is Anne Newberger and I serve in the White House coordinating our national security policies in the area of cyber and emerging technologies. We've heard from many world leaders that artificial intelligence is one of the most powerful tools of our time. And certainly President Biden has talked about the need for us to seize the benefits of, of AI and manage the risks. We're committed to doing this equitably. So while this started as a US-EU cooperation, we certainly see the future being a much larger collaboration among governments. And using AI for good, for the benefit of all citizens. Roberto, over to you. We are convinced that uh, we have to play our responsible role in terms of the governance, but also we are convinced that it's equally important to bring the benefit of AI to every citizen in the world. We would like to open up with the spirit on which we do these things, which is to plant uh, this uh, new uh, era of the human being, human being working with intelligent machines, in rooted in our principles, which are common and solid across the Atlantic, which is uh, democracy, respect of the human being, respect of their privacy. One of the questions that I get asked these days is, what is the United Nations doing on addressing the risks that are coming from AI? And at the same time, I get asked, what are you doing to use the opportunities that artificial intelligence and the data revolution offer to accelerate progress on the sustainable development goals. And the first answer that often comes up is, we are working to reinforce AI governance. We cannot have one part of the system not be aligned with the rest of the system. And these proposals of the Secretary General, the work that we are doing across the UN system, 
at this point in time will help these different, align these different tiers, make sure that this is resilient to face the risk of the future. The time for action is now. The opportunity is there to embed these solutions, these important frameworks for international governance of AI technologies into a larger global framework that member states can come together and adopt at the Summit of the Future next year. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for this kind of introduction. It's great to be actually closing this amazing day here with still a lot of people in the room and a lot of energy. You know, very important. We all know that art has always had the power to provoke thought, to spark conversation, to catalyze action. So by showcasing compelling visions for a sustainable world, we aim to inspire individuals and organizations to explore new ways of leveraging AI and other technologies to address global challenges and to advance the UN SDGs. So thank you very much. And let's just back on this journey to create a more sustainable world through the transformation fusion of art and technology.